Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today. It's really nice that you've been able to make a little bit of extra time to share with us. There's just a few housekeeping things I want to go over before we begin. To preserve the audio quality, please keep all lines muted. Make sure to enter your questions into the chat panel and select everyone as the recipient. I will share questions with the presenter. You may also use the chat panel if you have comments or need technical assistance. A copy of the slides may be found on the Alliant Health Solutions website, and a link to that site will be posted to chat in a little bit. Next slide, please. Here you can see the seven states that are covered by Alliant. Next slide, please. My name is Tanya Radala. Been a pharmacist for oh geez at this point we'll just say close to 20 years and i've been working in quality improvement for a little bit under six and what's important for today for you to know about me is that i'm just hosting this event but i am the lead for alliant for all things behavioral health and opioid so if you need to contact me or have any questions my information is there next Today's speaker is Sherry Barnett. She's the Regional Overdose Prevention Specialist. Sherry is a nurse practitioner with over 20 years in healthcare and more than seven years of sobriety. After a loss of licensure, a prison stint, and numerous other barriers, Sherry is now a nurse practitioner and Regional Overdose Prevention Specialist with the Sullivan County Anti-Drug Coalition. She's also a harm reduction activist and educates others on numerous topics, including overdose awareness and naloxone administration, harm reduction, stigma reduction, and provides life-saving naloxone to communities. Sherry shares her own story and how one can relate to others suffering from substance use disorder. In addition, Sherry promotes the education of, of adolescents, youth, and adults on harm reduction and life-saving measures. She's a certified peer recovery specialist and will be starting graduate school again to obtain a post-master's certificate as primary mental health nurse practitioner in correlation with starting her doctorate. And at this point, I am happy to turn the presentation over to Sherry Barnett. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's exciting to be here with you, and thank you for spending your lunch with us for the next 30 minutes. Um, so I was asked to talk about the different pathways to recovery. During my journey in recovery, there was a point in my life that I felt like if I could do it this way, everyone else can, but everyone else suffers different traumas and different reasons for um, their disease process. So let's talk about some of those different pathways to recovery. Let's first look at what is recovery. So recovery is not just the absence of substance use, right? The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration defines recovery as a process of change through which individuals improve their health and wellness, live a self-directed life, and strive to reach their full potential. My full potential may be different than your full potential. So recovery is not gonna look the same for everyone. There are four domains. One is health and that's overcoming or managing one's disease or symptoms and making informed health choices that support physical and emotional well-being. Home, having a stable and safe place to live. One person may consider that living in a tent. They may um, decide they want to live in an apartment or a house. However, that looks for them and having a stable and safe place to live. The purpose is conducting meaningful daily activities such as a job, school, volunteerism, family caretaking, or creative endeavors, and the independence, income, and resources to participate in society. Community, having relationships and social networks that provide your support, that provide support, friendship, love, and hope. I can't stress that enough. Empathy, friendship, love, and hope. So let's talk a little bit more about what is recovery. There are 10 guiding principles. One is hope. The belief that recovery is real provides the essential and motivating message of a better future. That's kind of do, that's why I kind of do what I do. 
Um, I talk to law enforcement, I talk to large groups. I have eight counties um, in the state of Tennessee. And the goal is to show people that we do recover and we do pay taxes, basically. Um, we want to show people that people can and do overcome the internal and external challenges, barriers, and obstacles that confront them. Hope is an internalized and can be fostered by peers, families, providers, allies, and others. Hope is the catalyst of the recovery process. Relational, an important factor in the recovery process is the presence and involvement of people who believe in the person's ability to recover. This is where your peers come in. That is where my title, the Certified Peer Recovery Specialist, plays a role. We want to offer hope, support, and encouragement, and also suggest strategies and resources for change. We, are, we as Certified Peer Recovery Specialists, are also great at providing helping accountability. It has to be person-driven. There has to be some self-determination and self-direction, which are the foundations for recovery as individuals define their own life goals, design their own unique paths towards these goals. Culture and cultural background in all of its diverse representations, including values, traditions, and beliefs, are keys in determining a person's journey and unique pathway to recovery. Please know, if you don't get anything out of this slideshow today or from my conversation with you, there are so many different pathways. Individuals are so unique with distinct needs. They have strengths, preferences, goals, culture, backgrounds, and trauma. These affect and determine their pathways to recovery. Recovery is built on the multiple capacities, strengths, talents, coping abilities, resources, and inherent value of each individual. These are, again, are highly personalized. Your recovery starts to address trauma. The experience of trauma, such as physical or sexual abuse, domestic violence, war, disaster, and others is often a precursor to or associated with alcohol and drug use. They also are associated with mental health problems and related issues. If you've not heard of the adverse childhood event study that was done in 1998 by uh, Kaiser Permanente, please look into that. It de defines the five top reasons of death in adults and kind of correlates it with um, childhood trauma. Recovery is a holistic. That means that we encompass an individual's whole life, including their mind, body, spirit, and community. And their spirit and their community may be totally different from ours. You heard me talk about peer support earlier, mutual support and mutual aid groups, including the sharing of experiential knowledge and skills, as well as social learning, play an invaluable role in recovery. And again, I, I don't take lightly the role of accountability. Accountability to set goals and meet those goals. There's respect, um, which a lot in our community is not given. Respect is um, overshadowed by huge stigma. So community and systems and societal acceptance and appreciation for people affected by mental health and substance use problems, including protecting their rights and eliminating discrimination are crucial. <clears throat> a person is less likely to go into recovery or achieve recovery if they are continuously uh, stigmatized against. I experienced this when I was in detox in the hospital of the same hospital that I was a manager, a director, and outside my door, you could hear nurses talking about me. Strengths and responsibility. Individuals, families, and communities have strengths and resources that serve as a foundation for recovery. So quickly, we'll go over some of the recovery paths. You can have a natural recovery. We have recovery mutual aid groups, medication assisted recovery, which is unfortunately scientifically based as the gold treatment, the gold standard. However, one of the most controversial topics in the United States today. Peer based recovery supports, 
family recovery. We even have technology-based recovery, alternative recovery supports. So natural recovery was kind of new to me. I think that I've really never placed a name to it, but natural recovery is, according to some studies, the most common recovery pathway. The prevalence of this style declines as problem duration and severity increase. So when I think of this, I think of someone that may have um, dibble dabbled, became uh, a little bit physically dependent and was able to get out from under it with, um, you know, just by stopping. Natural recovery is a more viable pathway for people with shorter and less severe alcohol or other drug, drug problems. And for those, unfortunately, with higher incomes and more stable social and occupational supports. So your mutual aid groups, often called self-help groups or support groups, these groups are small scale community oriented groups where people suffering from substance use disorders meet and provide support for each other. Each have their pros and cons. There is not one that is better than the other, and there may be one that person that seems to migrate toward one. I, in the beginning of mine, was Celebrate Recovery. It is Christian-based, and it's 12 steps, and it's absence-based. Again, that kind of went against my beliefs. So, um, I am partial to it because I have several friends that go that seem to do really well. And then I have friends who are not religious or um, their higher power is not in base with Christian based. The 12 step fellowships is an AA, um, CA or NA groups. And these are your groups that follow 12 strict principles. Unfortunately, the recidivism rate or the relapse rate is above 80% which we do expect some relapse, but there are guiding principles that always don't align with uh, reality and science-based information. However, there is a camaraderie in the 12 steps that is that can be such a support, it overrides anything that you may not agree with. Life Ring, again, is absence-based. It believes people do have the power to overcome addiction and they provide empowerment to create your own personal recovery plan. There's moderation management, and this is sort of like the, along the lines of, um, goes along kind of with smart recovery. It is a behavior change program and national support group ne network. However, they are alcohol abused and focused, um, and your website is there. There's Phoenix Multisport, which I was excited to see because a lot of individuals in recovery are people that pick up hiking, running, yoga um, as a form of support for the recovery. And unfortunately, we have similar programs in our area, but these are phenomenal. There's uh, Shatterproof and there's a few online that offers running um, in just different activities. It keeps the mind well. It offers being in nature. And I can't stress those types of activities enough. I am a big advocate of smart recovery. I am a facilitator because I love the program so much. It is a self-management and recovery training program. It is science-based. It is medication-assisted treatment friendly. And if you wonder why I promote medication-assisted treatment, is um, I don't promote it. Um, I'm just an advocate for it. I am absence-based because I am a nurse practitioner and have to be. Um, however, we need to give everyone their spot in recovery, even if they're on medication. It is a four-point program, and there's actual um, worksheets. There's actual conversations that explain the disease process and encourages someone how to fulfill recovery. There's well variety, and this was uh, new to me, Native Nations, the cultural knowledge about recovery for individuals, families, and communities. Uh, the Native Nations do have a different belief about recovery at um, certain crossroads. There's also the White Bison, which is a Native American, Alaska, um, and it provides learning resources for sobriety, recovery, addictions, prevention, and wellness. 
Women's for Sobriety is pretty popular. Again, it is more of a 12-step program. It's absence-based. They do declare themselves to have a 13-statement program. And there is refuge recovery. And this uses Buddhist philosophy as a foundation. And I think that's kind of neat. So along with your self-help groups, know that there is a medication-assisted treatment. Now, if you read the title again, that says medication-assisted treatment. That means medication is not the uh, end all to recovery and that it should be assisted with other modalities. So MAT is the use of addiction medicines to fight opioid and alcohol dependence. It, it is the use of medications in combination with counseling and behavioral therapies for the treatment of substance use disorder. Some of your well-known medication-assisted treatment drugs are methadone. Methadone is what we call a full agonist opiate, making it no different from other opioids. And basically, you will see um, methadone used in individuals that have um, an addiction to heroin that are needing recovery from that type of addiction. You do have your buprenorphine, which is your Subutex, your Suboxone, your Sublocade. There's actually Suboxone implants, and the Sublocade injection and the implants can actually um, help decrease any diversion or any misuse. It is a partial agonist opiate. Now, partial agonist opiate basically does not give you the euphoria of an actual opioid. So you're not getting the high, but you're getting the side, of, the side effects of not going into withdrawals or your dopamine levels dropping or the quote unquote dope sickness. Naltrexone, naltrexone is a full antagonist. So it kind of goes along the lines of uh, naloxone, which I do a class in, overdose awareness and how to administer naloxone. But this markedly attenuates or completely blocks reversibly the subject effects of intravenous administered opioids. So what does that mean? That means basically if you try to use an opioid or drink alcohol, you could become sick. There's functional medicine, uh, neurotransmitter restoration therapy, and nutrient therapies. And these are based on science. These are newer. Um, I've seen a few areas in my um, area that have popped up that are called functional medicine. Um, it is based on science, and it is for opioid and alcohol. But what they believe is also um, restoring nutrients. I totally agree with that. I think it's... Um, um, criteria that someone that has suffered from substance use, regardless of the substance use, that um, their nutrients are replaced. I think it promotes an earlier physical recovery and they're able to uh, um, participate in other activities. Um, there's acamprosate. I just studied this drug in um, mental health and it's an anti-alcohol agent. It actually works with the serotonin levels in the brain. And the person must have already quit drinking or went through detox. And just like I said, it restores chemical balance to the brain and decreases cravings. In my practice that I've, that I've been in healthcare for 30 years, I've only prescribed Anabuse one time. And Anabuse is Dysulfiram, and it blocks a specific enzyme involved in metabolizing alcohol it can make someone deathly ill. Actually, an abuse has been used in cases of murder, to be honest. Um, I watched those documentaries that go back years. So there are severe side effects when alcohol consumption occurs. There are peer-based recovery support services. Peer-based recovery support services are common and more um, popular than they ever have been and they are often effective means by which individuals have found and sustained long-term recovery. The services are provided by individuals who have suffered from substance use disorder. Now, you will start to hear in your community about classes for certified peer recovery specialists. If you go to a safe syringe program, it is noted that those individuals that have a relationship with the CPRS individuals there 
are five times more likely to find recovery and stop injecting drugs. That is five times huge. So I am a big advocate in uh, becoming a peer and living your recovery loudly. There's the Center for Addiction Recovery Training. Recovery Coaches International is great. She recovers coaches, certified recovery nutrition coaches, recovery life coaching services, and recovery life coaching. Now, in your bigger cities like Los Angeles, to where um, there are um, actual recovery coaches that go in and live with a person. Unfortunately, I don't live in Los, uh, like bigger cities. I would love to do that. That would be phenomenal. Family recovery. So the purpose of family-based recovery is to ensure that children develop optimally in substance-free, safe, and stable homes with their parents. I would like to think this could be combined with medication assist treatment and other forms of recovery as well. So as you see, there's not one form of recovery that we take off the shelf, put it in our notebook, and this is what we're gonna do. It can be a combination. Family-based recovery integrates an attachment-based parent-child therapeutic approach with contingency management, substance use treatment, trauma-informed psychotherapy, and case management services. Now that right there is awesome. Hey, and for all of you that stay on your phone a lot, I know that when I was in recovery, I wanted these online programs that I could just go online and do. Um, it was just easier. And I also wanted an app to where I could go talk to somebody immediately. And actually we have those now, but using technology to promote long lasting recovery at its most basic access to technology has allowed those with substance use disorders the opportunity to learn more and find services that will help them in recovery. This also helps those around the person that suffers from substance use disorder. See, terminology, got to break that stigma in my thought patterns. We don't want to use the word addict, such as friends or parents who can find more information to help them understand substance use disorder. And some of these are We Connect, Seven Cups in the Rooms, Recovery 2.0, even Reddit has a recovery room. She recovers, of course, smart recovery and supplement your recovery. There's thousands of alternative recovery tools and these are the ones that are not, uh, that I have felt are not scams. These amino acid therapies, they do work for people. Yoga in recovery, wolf therapy, nutrition therapy, the artist way um, of people in working with artists and doing art therapy, cognitive therapy, meditation, any of the arts like dance, music, art, journaling, therapeutic writing. I can't stress it enough. I have a friend that does equine therapy for children who are suffering from substance use disorder or mental health disorders and their parents. Therapy fitness for recovery. There's also the holistic health and natural alternatives approach. Hypnotherapy, there is mindful based stress reduction and mindful based relapse prevention. And of course, RAP, and that's Wellness Recovery Action Plan. So in summary, there are so many recovery paths and I'm sure that I didn't get all of the, the most uh, popular programs, but one thing I do want you to remember, based on a person's perception of wellness, and this is my quote, based on a person's perception of wellness and what is self-fulfilling, their recovery can vary in shape and size. Most individuals in recovery will not use only one pathway. They will take pieces and parts of several recovery pathways and make their own successful combination. Always remember, recovery is like your thumbprint. There are no two pathways the same. Hi everyone, I just wanted to make sure that we got to share a little bit of information. Uh, we've put together some slides here that give different ways to reach recovery in different places. So there is a slide here for federal and you can find these slides available online. I did put the link in the chat so you can um, 
look for them there, but here are some federal. Next slide, please. There's some national, and I included everything here, whether it be alcohol, narcotics, et cetera. So there's definitely different types of recovery that are covered here. Next. We'll find resources for each state. So here's Alabama. Next. Florida. Georgia. Kentucky, Louisiana, North Carolina, and Tennessee. And our next slide is the question slide. So I want, if anyone has anything, please place it in the chat. I, I did see one mention that this was a great presentation. So thank you, Sherry. Um, that's not just from me, but from those listening as well, so that you've done. Oh, thank you guys in, in expressing and sharing the different pathways. Um, and it's definitely interesting. Um, we do have 1 here. There are so many options. Where do you suggest someone start in making the decision on a recovery program for themselves? Well, 1st of all, you have to start at kind of at Maslow's hierarchy. The first thing is to stay alive. So what do we know about that person is that they're using certain substances. If it's opioids, or even if it's methamphetamines um, that are being laced with opioids here recently, um, the key is to acknowledge that they're using um, and also to acknowledge that we want to keep them alive. If it's for us, um, I want you to be alive. So start being educated on your naloxone um, and overdose awareness, start putting harm reduction measures in place first so we can keep the person alive. But the first thing you want to do is to see about detoxification. Your physical well-being contributes to how you are able to um, work in recovery settings, especially if you're a heavy user. Um, again, medical detox is so much better than cold turkey. Um, I actually coded twice in the um, in the hospital from doing a cold turkey detox. Um, we now have the advantage of medical detox in certain facilities around us. So we, I would work on that, get them through that. And then we start looking at long-term out of area outreaches and rehabs. The program, the reason being real quickly, the reason for relapse is called the pleasure principle and dopamine in your brain. And what ends up happening is you can come across people, places, things, smells, um, you know, habits. It is ideal for a person to be removed, even if just 20 to 30 miles down the road to a different um, rehab program. I have resources. My information is on the slide, I think, um, that you can call me, message me, email me, and I have resources in different states that can kind of help you. I do take care and find places for children all the way up to adults. So I hope that answered your question. I think that definitely did. Thank you so much for that help. Um, I don't see any other questions at this point. I'm just going to continue on with our slides. If anyone does have any questions, please feel free to drop those in chat and I will read those out to Sherry. But at this point in the slide that you can see here, uh, Alliance CMS scope of work goals, as you can see, there's behavioral health and opioid misuse, along with patient safety, chronic disease, self-management, quality of care transitions, and nursing home quality. Next slide, please. If you need to make contact with any of our program directors, Jovan Givens covers Alabama, Florida, and Louisiana, and that is actually being um, transferred over to Julie Keeker. But if you give Jovan an email, we can definitely get you in touch. Additionally, Leanne Sells for Georgia, Kentucky, North Carolina, and Tennessee. Next slide, please. Our next Learning in Action webinar will be on April 19th at 2 p.m. It will be applying evidence-based practices to prevent, mitigate, and manage delirium. Next slide, please. 
And as always, you can choose your favorite social media venue, whether that be Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or YouTube to catch up with Alliant.